Hello, everybody, and we're back for another episode of Two Bags with Teddy. I am your host, Teddy. I'm joined here today by Bo and Andres. Fellas, how we doing? Chilling. Good, good. All right. Today, we will be reviewing Ghosts of Tsushima. <laughs> Fight like that. It was nothing. Oh, oh, you are more than a samurai. He is a vengeful spirit. Back from the grave to slaughter the Mongols. Fellas, what'd you guys think? Overall, I think it's a great game. And I feel like every point I'm gonna make is just gonna be more of a small nitpick. But I think Jen Sakai's character was very well written, and the whole scope of just like fighting with honor or dishonor to get the job done. I feel like it was a great theme throughout the whole story. So you hated the game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All my like, points are Nick Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, well, I feel like this this review is going to be overall praising this game because I think this game was fucking magnificent. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think was, overall it's just a very fun game. Right. I saw someone on Twitter write that this game perfectly balances gameplay and narrative where none kind of overshadows the other. The narrative is good. The gameplay is probably better. The gameplay is mm-hmm. definitely the best part of this game. Just chopping people up with a katana. I mean, it's essentially awesome. just a samurai power trip. It's like everything. I've always wanted. I've been waiting for like my Ninja Gaiden Black game because Ninja Gaiden Black is an Xbox game that I loved, and right. I haven't played a samurai ninja game since then. And this game was just as good as that game. Well, they bring in some of the aspects of being a ninja as well because right. Jin has to make the decision, and you talked about it—the moral dilemma of fighting your enemy head on or fighting in the shadows and he makes the choice to go into the shadows and the stealth in this game is probably my biggest criticism overall of the gameplay the stealth is same here the ai are very dumb (laughs) especially comparing it to a game like metal gear solid 5 it's it's a joke in the sense that you could just like casually walk past the enemy and they will not be alert at all and i've heard a lot of players say that they just didn't even try to engage in stealth they just went head on because it was more fun and the stealth ai just took them out of it Here's the thing, though. Is it that bad on hard, too? Because, I mean, I mean, I played on medium and easy. I didn't, because I wanted to beat the game. I wasn't trying to. I've heard I it's bad on to. hard really? as well. I mean, even on medium, the, first of all, those bushes. <laughs> you <laughs> Your bow and arrow <laughs> sticking out of the bush. <laughs> it's just a head popping out. They're like, yeah, nothing there. It's just <laughs> it, a scarecrow on his so knees. Funny. The parkour in this game was really good, too. It took off of Uncharted. And Assassin's Creed as well. Yeah, yeah. this is an Assassin's Creed ninja, or a samurai. Like you could even see, like, a little hint of Last of Us in there, the way you, like, shimmy through, like, little walls and stuff like that. Last of Us, that's the thing, too, because do you think we set the bar at Last of Us now? <laughs> because this game was just, a, the graphics were just as good as Last of Us, but it wasn't to the same bar as Last of Us. Well, these two games came out at the right exact moment because of the debate that's happening in the video game community narrative versus gameplay and the last of us is i think the second one took a step up where the stealth in the last of us 2 i think it rivals some of the best metal gear games and then you have ghost of tsushima where like i said it's the gameplay is what makes it so fun and maybe that's more important it is a game it's a video game so i guess if you have the most fun does that mean it's the better game i don't know I don't think i don't know what the bar is though because with the last of us that's it, it feels like a narrative bar tsushima doesn't hit that whatsoever for me But maybe that's not what's most important. I guess that's a fair argument because, to me personally, I feel like a game should just be about having fun. And while I loved Last of Us and Ghost of Tsushima, I'm way more likely to replay Ghost of Tsushima. Found the gameplay to be a lot more fun, as well as the story. I think that's a good point. Ghost of Tsushima is, and I don't think it's a dumb game at all, but it's a game where you can kind of turn off your brain and wander, even through the storyline. Because with all these open worlds, uh, I mean, one of these open worlds not going to be repetitive with the little side missions. Right. It is what it is. It depends on how fun it is to do those side missions over and over and over again. You have to factor that in, the replayability of a game. What happens in this game, the side missions, they differentiated the side missions. They're, yeah, you had your, your camp takeovers, your hostages that you, that you needed to save, but your side missions weren't the whole game. You can skip through the game pretty much because you can do different parts of the act that you're in. Right and do the side missions, and also push the game forward with those side missions. And I think the best way to tackle a game like this is to do all those side missions first. And the way I played it was I did the story at first, so at the end I felt like I just lied to all these people. Like, yeah, Lady (laughs) Masaka, I'll help you eventually. Bro, it's the same thing, dude. Oh, no, sure, sure. sure. (laughs) When you start a side mission, you're like, help me, help me. As soon as the Mongols, oh, yeah, I felt bad with that, too. Do you want to start this new mission? (laughs) 
Eh, not right now. I'll come back for you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to hit R2. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think the best way to tackle this game is to do all those side missions first with the supporting characters. And the supporting characters in this game are great. So you can just build up your skills and your techniques. And that was my favorite part of the game, the different stances. When you would get into those brawls with men with spears and shields and the brutes, and you would have to just change on the fly. It, it was hard, and I sucked at it for a long time. You have to be quick, man. One of, that's one of the things I liked about the game the most was the biggest sense of progression that you felt. Every side mission, there was a clear reward, and also that you got to see what the reward was before you even start the mission. Right. But uh, I think the Mythic Tales is where the game really stood out, mm-hmm. especially, like, the duels with uh, the Ronin. I'm so... I got so sick of the duels. Yeah, I couldn't get a duel, man. I want to go on to the upgrade system they had. You didn't feel like you were overwhelmed because you couldn't really get into a fight. It was either you... If you were if you weren't equipped for that battle, you couldn't do it. As the game goes along, you're upgrading yourself, and like you said with the stanzas, each stands that aspect of this game is what separated this game from good to great for me. Having to differentiate while you're fighting, it took stands. a lot out of me. Man. It did, man. I felt like I you had, had to, to think. really be locked in. It was that meme where you're laying, sitting back on your chair, and then you go forward a bit. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just box, 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 circle, circle. You know, you had to actually pay attention to who was fighting you. Right, it's uh, the Batman Arkham combat system where it's just box, 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 how many combos you can get. And it kind of starts that way. You feel like you're overpowering these characters, but they get stronger. And like you said, you really have to be good with the controls. And that's why I'm excited for the multiplayer, getting some one-on-one duels online. And even the boss missions were really fun. The first one, I guess the first major one is Khan, but he beats your ass. And then the one where you really fight is... I was so hurt, like emotionally, that so Ryuzu. That was, a, <laughs> that was a top 10 Ghost of Tsushima betrayal. Dude, this story, it actually makes you feel bad for each guy. I think the character that caught me the most off guard was probably Lady Masako. And like her whole storyline with yeah. like her grandkids being slaughtered. And she's just on a whole like revenge trip throughout well, the game. I was talking to you the other day saying that could just be a game on its own. They could just do the Lady Masako spinoff where it's just from her perspective, this older aging warrior trying to avenge her family in the midst of this war. There's so much there for just that side story. I'd and buy the DLC. The side characters were great. Uh, Norio, there's just something about tall, pudgy warriors that I love. I love Genji. Yeah, yeah. Sake dealer. <laughs> that man was just dealing Sake. He, he didn't care. He had a good heart, though. He was grinding. He was good. Yeah, yeah, he had a good heart. We'll discuss the plan on the move. Let's have a drink first. Talk this through. Now, Kenji. And Taka, as well. Yuna and Taka were... Ugh. You didn't like Yuna and Taka? I wasn't a fan of Taka. What do you mean? He got you the grapple. He was, I thought he was annoying, man. <laughs> he built you a grapple. It's the I, best I, weapon in video yeah, okay, game history. Right. You built me the grapple, now you just slow me down. But man. what about the ghost armor? <laughs> yeah, the ghost armor is yeah, nice. he hooks too. you up with all the armor. He goes out like a G. He wasn't a coward. And the relationship between Jin and Yuna was so important in this game. And It's a platonic relationship. And at times, they do kind of hint at the romance, but... That's why I kind of enjoyed it. It was refreshing that it was it was more of a just a friendship and a partnership. Mm-hmm. Two people coming together from different worlds and with different motivations coming together closer with their ideals and their fight. So that's why I really enjoyed their relationship. And Jin Sakai was a very good main character. Yeah, he was. And it, it's interesting that Jin with all these, he's getting different perspectives on what it means to be a warrior. And obviously with him and his uncle, they examine that a lot as well. You gotta do what you can to win, man. Exactly. And that's exactly what he did, and I love I loved that he went uh that he went full ghost on his uncle. You have no honor. And you are a slave to it. Daisuke Suji did a great job voice acting Jin. And I think Jin is a very generic character, but the voice brings him to life. I thought his character was definitely very human, and I think that the childhood flashbacks definitely added a lot more to him. Yeah, definitely. Seeing his transformation from kid to samurai. For me, Lord Shimmer's character, there could have been more motivation behind him betraying Jin. It kind of just felt like, you he know, you broke black a, and white, very black and white. And when you look at the circumstances what of what is going on on this island, him having such a problem with the way Jin oh. is fighting to me just didn't feel realistic. That bothered me too. Because I mean, he does go a bit too far when they attack Castle Shimmer. When with he the just poison darts, heads those guys. Yeah, yeah and the poison darts. It, it's the heat of battle. But also, I thought Jin. that was a great move. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great move. That's no, that's what I'm saying. That's it, what made me think that maybe Lord Shimura was kind of like in cahoots with Khan. Like he's trying to send his boys. <laughs> like, well, listen, he's trying to send his boys into combat to show that they can't beat him. Jim was telling him, you, "We can't go." I looked at it. There's, there's too much. We can't cross the bridge. We're gonna die. Right. And Shimura, like you said, he just kept reinforcing, "No, we have to fight them head on." It's no, like, I think that was just. 
bad writing. Yeah. I think that's just a very rigid and stubborn character, and the stubbornness behind that character. That's the thing is he's got a very good heart. There's nobody. There's no way that someone that good would be that stubborn and not be able to see the big picture. By that time, I wanted to chop the guy's head off. I was like, are you fucking... Everything I've done for this goddamn island, yeah. <laughs> you know what I've gone through? I felt all of those emotions you just talked about, I felt until the end end scene when like, you sat there with him. And I was like, oh, shit, man. I really feel bad for did, this guy right now. Did you kill him? Oh, yeah. Slice him up. You kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Let this guy live. I spared kill him. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I spared him. I read what happens when you do kill him. I think that's a better ending. Yeah, it was I great. I think it's a better written ending. The exchanges between them saying, I hope you find peace. See, the thing is, I was just genuinely upset at him, and I wanted to be petty, <laughs> so I figured not killing him would make him suffer more. Well, I think the not killing him, it's Jin rejecting the samurai completely. That's it's what him you said, saying, yeah. he is no, I'm no longer a samurai. I can't kill you as a samurai, because I'm not a samurai. Old and busted. New hotness. <laughs> I'm men in black. <laughs> you just said it so much better than I did with all those words. <laughs> just need a nice Will Smith quote. <laughs> that is perfect. Old and busted. New hotness. But see, the thing is, like, this game, they talk so much about the Kurosawa influence, and they have the Kurosawa mode, which I think is, it looks terrible. The game wasn't coded to be in black and white. It's too colorful. Yeah. it's yeah. That's oh, the thing. Yeah. The game is so gorgeous. Putting on that black and white filter just takes away. I want to get into that, man. The landscape of this fucking game was phenomenal. I really, I, is Japan really like that? No. The seasons are just changing in between fights. I Do swear we to- stop there? <laughs> they, just, <laughs> they just, no, it just leaves all, it's autumn permanently. You know, the old samurai influences, when you just use a monochrome filter and paint it over this game, you lose that black and white beauty that Kurosawa was able to create through the work with his cinematographers on those earlier movies. And also, that's just a visual standpoint. From a narrative standpoint, Kurosawa's movies were way more complex. I mean, they treated the samurai as they were, part of nobility, nobility's enforcers. And that's the thing, Jin Sakai, it works for this game because he's positioned as the good guy with maybe some questionable morals and tactics up against the big bad Khan, and it works. Speaking of Khan, what did you guys think of Khan, the big bad? I loved Midnight in the Museum. Oh my god. Yeah, it's the same guy. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> I was going to say that th- this this game is based off of 1274, I believe, when the Mongols invaded the islands of Tsushima. Yes. I like that they didn't delve too much into him. It was just, he was a big bad. He wants to take over Tsushima. And with his fights, I'm not a big fan of fighting a guy halfway, wasting all this time fighting him halfway, and then cutscene to him like they did with Jin. He threw him off the bridge. You know, I'd rather just see the cutscene. You know, I didn't get to fight him yet, and then you get the big fight at the end. I guess the point of that part was just to make you feel so, like, weak and vulnerable. Helpless, yeah. Yeah, and to just feel the power difference at the time. Right, the power difference, you don't have any of your stances, and then you kind of build no up to that fight, and then you have to use all the stances against Khan. And I agree with you. I like the fact that he was in the shadows. They didn't focus on him too much. Yeah. You don't really want to give this type of villain. He's the invader. He's the, the Sauron of the universe. He's not your narrative. Your narrative is Jin getting your allies trying to win your uncle's trust back, proving him wrong and defeating the Khan. Right, and I think the point of this game is to show that you can't win a war by yourself, and that's Jin's role. He's giving hope to this island. And the Khan, I think he just, he's kind of just the big physical embodiment of what war is. Right. It's it's brutal, and he represents that. And I thought the voiceover performance by Patrick Gallagher as that character was great. Every scene with Khan, I was glued to the TV. I love the conversations between the Khan and Lord Shimura. You kidding me? That scene when he <laughs> burns that body alive? When he makes, uh... Ryozu? He makes Ryozu burn, uh, one of those civilians? Open the gate! That was a great, that was actually a great scene. That was a fantastic <laughs> scene. The betrayal of Ryozu hit so much more because it was a realistic circumstance. It was a realistic decision that that character made. Right. I know you're my childhood friend, but we're all starving here. And like like we said, war makes you make decisions that are costly. Yeah, I, I felt that one. Also, he's resented Jin throughout his entire childhood because he's the reason why he isn't a samurai. Right, yeah. So all of that just works perfectly for that moment when he does betray you. Hits him twice, too. <laughs> Yeah, the second time I felt bad because you just dice him up. Jin is not taking prisoners no. in that second fight. <laughs> the first fight, he's upset. He's telling him, how could you? And the second fight, he's like, get over here, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> we can defeat the Khan. Yeah, yeah right. that time's passed, guys. second one's like, Khan's next, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that ghost aspect when you're fighting, I thought it was a great touch when you press L3 and, R- and uh, R3. I was genuinely scared the first time it happened. <laughs> Me too. I thought, is this man going too far? I thought when, when you click that, you can at least do it. Until a timer runs out. But you can only kill like three enemies. Is that what it was? Yeah, it's three enemies. The first time you kill more than three, right? Don't you run through like seven? I think you run through the rest of the mission. Yeah, yeah, you're just running (laughs) up into that, to the gate. 
Well, you're just, just the driving cop. them back. How were you guys with the bow? I was nasty with the bow and arrow. I didn't miss. The bow was fun. I was actually terrible with the bow, but I got better with it. You can slow it down, too. I was a cool aspect. Yeah, the slowing it down. Focus up. Well, it got to a point where I did feel like such a bastard because I was using all these other weapons while these people were just fighting with swords. <laughs> I'm throwing the throwing knives. I've got the smoke bombs. I feel like outside of the bow, I wasn't really using any of the other weapons. Maybe occasionally the throwing knife if I was like in a tight situation, but other than that, I was just using the sword. Yeah, the knife is good to create a little space. Do you think... Since you can get, like you just said, you went through pretty much just a sword, do you think that the game could have been better then to make you have to use more? Or do you think if, if you have to use more, then the game is kind of corny? I think the freedom is a nice aspect that you can kind of just play in any play style that you want. Right. What stance was your favorite? You guys have a favorite stance? Shield. When you can, like, hold triangle and then he kind of just does, like, that dicing move. Oh, or, yeah. Yeah. Sick. yeah, I did love that. Yeah. <laughs> the shield stance. <laughs> what was it? I like the brute, too, when you kick them. <laughs> you hold, yeah. You're walking around with your sword above your head. I like that uh, traveling in this game didn't seem like it was a burden. Because you're on your horse, you can you're doing missions as you're going. You can pick up stuff as you're going. I also love that um the whole like HUD wasn't overwhelming. It's just like follow the wind whenever right. you set a waypoint. Yes, the oh. directional wind was perfect. And every time they would put you on a new mission, the wind would blow, so you know exactly what direction to go. I would have liked the mini map. I like the wind, but I would have liked. I always like a mini map. You like a good mini map? Yeah. Nice little GTA yellow dot. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> the map too. I I like the map. I feel like the map have being skinny and long makes it, it, it easier to explore yeah it, it's bigger than it seems and it makes it easier to explore where like you're not it's not like a, a huge wide open area where it feels like you're missing stuff fast travel i'll always use it for the long distances but just using the horse and just riding through the map and avoiding all the fights and just enjoying the scenery was so fun it was like swinging around in spider-man I you could just really sit back and enjoy it i wanted to do that but the second I passed a Mongol territory or a standoff, I couldn't help myself. That's Yeah, it got to a point where I had to just ignore everyone. Yeah. I felt so bad. <laughs> just roll the windows up. Don't look. <laughs> I like that aspect with the Mongol territories where, like I said in the beginning, yes, it's all the same. Like, you're fighting Mongol territories. It's, it's like you're taking over a camp. But the rewards are different each time. There's different enemies in each one. There's different tactics. You can go stealth. You know, I thought, I don't know, I, I love that. Also, just subtle things, like, outside of the Mongol camps, you might find, like, prisoners or something like yeah. that, and if you were to free them, they'll be like, oh, th uh, please help us, uh, there are more people stuck in X camp over there, mm -hmm. and you have a new objective. See, that's why I want to platinum this game, because I feel a responsibility to save this island. <laughs> After everything I went through, people are looking towards me as the ghost. There's no better feeling than liberating a camp. <laughs> it, yeah, it does. It feels good to unlock those prisoners. But then I hate when they tell me there's another camp with prisoners. I'm I like, know, oh my like God, I just I had did this stuff man. to do, man. <laughs> Princesses in another castle. <laughs> 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 exactly. But okay, wait, wait. So didn't the sensei kind of pull like the deep in the sense of like pulling a 180 when he was like, "You cannot talk to Tamo. She is the worst." And then she shows up, and he's like, "Oh, hey, Tamo, I missed you." He's like, "Hey, you uh, <laughs> got a new form for the bow there, right?" <laughs> <laughs> you took that last one with the circling falcon shot, sensei. You saw that. You change your form, too. I shift the right hand down, so when you release... Hmm, that's interesting. Once again, a, vo a great voiceover performance. He begins like Shimura, like I mentioned, he's very rigid and stubborn, but he begins to open up because he tells Jin, I made a lot of the mistakes that, not that you made, but you could possibly make going down this path, and he becomes Jin's mentor as the story progresses, and I like that shift. And, uh, you know, once again, with Tomoe, he's building her up this whole time as this murdering monster <laughs> yeah and she, she's just trying to make she's just trying to survive yeah it's just upsetting how stubborn it, uh shimura was i really wish it could have worked out between us it didn't have to end like that just you chopping his head off <laughs> 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 the combat in this game if you died didn't it feel like it was on you I like that it wasn't the mechanics of the game, you know? Like, if you died, it just meant that you sucked. <laughs> that is a great point. I never once said, fuck this game, this game's broken. Yeah. It was always me. And I think that almost, it softens the blow. There was no other way.
Like if because you can this get, is just me sucking. I yeah. need to be better. <laughs> like you, you can parry attacks, you can dodge attacks. Right. There was nothing that was just so unbeatable. Yeah. Whenever I died, I just told myself I have to be a better samurai. <laughs> <laughs> I the, abused those resolves though. Oh yeah, it was <laughs> 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 every fucking second. All right, and that is the Ghost of Tsushima review. Thank you for watching, everyone. Like and subscribe. Bo and Andres, thank you guys for coming. Of course. Oh, I thought you were telling us to like and subscribe. You guys can like and subscribe, too. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll try. I think Aaron just walked in. Aaron can, too. I always dislike the videos. Do you? I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I try to leave mean comments. <laughs> I'm about to start doing that to myself. Well, would you look at that? It's finally over. Hey guys, Bo Oliver here for one final send-off. Now, before I beg you guys to like and share this video, I'd like to thank our very special Patreon pledgers. We are very proud of the community we've been able to build here at NerdTube, and it would not have been possible without our Patreon supporters. You guys are the true MVPs of this channel. Everything I've said, you keep the fridge full, you keep the lights on. There aren't enough words to thank you guys, but we'll do it anyway. Thank you. And we have a few videos coming up that have been suggested to us by Patreon pledgers. My Hero Academia, Neon Genesis Evangelion, and Full Metal Alchemist will be reviewed by Marissa, and yours truly, and Castlevania, which will be reviewed by Marissa and Aaron. And if you'd like to consider donating to our Patreon page, you can visit patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out some of the rewards we offer to our listeners. And really, we'd like to thank everyone who takes the time out of their day to watch our videos. Patreon pledger or not, your support is what keeps us motivated to keep giving the world our opinions on movies and TV shows and video games and pop culture, even though no one asked for it. We're still here, we're still yapping, and we hope you continue to join us. I'm Bo Oliver and I support this message.